Okay. All right. So, ayon class, ano, so these are the learning objectives. Number two, uh, account for the assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses of the nonprofit organizations. Uh, enumerate and describe the financial statements of nonprofit organizations. And lastly, state the accounting procedures peculiar to specific types of nonprofit organizations. Okay. Ayan, so una, applicability of FRS to nonprofit organizations. Um, dito sa book, there are several uh, discussions, no? Pero mag na lang, dito na lang ako mag-stick sa, sa, sa PowerPoint, no? Uh, walang ano class, uh, walang specific na accounting standards for nonprofit organizations. No? So walang ganun. Kaya ang nangyayari, kung babasahin nyo dito sa ano natin, sa, sa book, puro ano lang to, puro reference lang, no? mga implied, uh, implied statement na pwedeng gamitin for uh, non-profit organizations. So, anong e-expect mo kung ganun yung uh, sinasabi dito sa introduction? So, una, yung ano, yung mga accounts, baka iba. Probably, probably iba. Ano? So, yung mga transactions, probably iba din. So, this is not, uh, unlike kasi dun sa government accounting, di ba? Sinimula natin siya with a statement that says, almost the same with uh, accounting in private entity. But this one, ayan. So, this is, uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, not like that. So, yun yung sabi dito. But, uh, although walang ano, expressly stated na mga PFRS or, or IFRS, pwede, pa, pwede namang i-apply. No. So, yung, yung mga pwedeng gamitin, gagamitin. Okay? Right? So, yung nandito sa page 400, 401, um, hindi ko na ano yun na, pakibasa nyo na lang for your reference. So, dito na ako sa PowerPoint. So, ano ba yung current trend sa practice? Uh, of accounting in non-profit organizations. So, ang sabi dito, <laughs> ayun na naman. Ano. So, parang pareho lang. Maybe because uh, what were, what uh, it is being stated here is yung the way you treat transactions. Pero eventually, makikita natin na hindi na. na, na. Kasi similar in the same of dealing with transactions. Kasi you just, you just is a record mo lang din naman yun. Eh. Pare pareho lang naman office works yun. And then, uh, notable differences are yeah, terminologies na ginagamit sa FS, which are modified for the, uh, sabi dito, which are modified to suit the purpose of non-profit organizations and the presentation and disclosure of equity. Okay. And so after those two slides, ano ba yung non-profit organizations? So as defined here, as mentioned dito, sana yun? Ayan. So, sa book natin, uh, non-profit organizations or NPO or not-for-profit entity, NFP or non-commercial organizations. So, dun pa lang, no, sa defeat sa name niya na non-for-profit, ayan. So, hindi ka masyado makakapag-expect dito ng mga, ano, mga common term that, na, common accounting term or common uh, unit of account na ginagamit sa isang sa business entity no so of course wala akong makikita ng sales wala akong makikita ng cost of sales and other similar uh, nature of account okay sabi dito a non-profit organization is one that carries out some socially desirable needs of the community or its members whose activities are not directed towards making profit Ayan. So, sa book natin, marami examples, no? Pero to give some, ayan. In general, ito yun. So, actually, there are three lang in general. So, we have the healthcare organizations. To be specific, yung mga private hospitals. Kasi, bakit private? Kasi yung public hospitals, dun mo yun ilalamp sa, ano, sa accounting for government uh, agencies, no? And then we have uh, private non-profit colleges and universities. Ayan. So, yun yung mga private. Ano. 
So marami naman kayong alam na mga private uh, colleges and universities, no? Hindi na natin kailangan magbigyan ng example. For letter C, uh, voluntary health and welfare organizations. To give some, we have uh, Philippine Red Cross. And then, nalagay ko dito yung Angat Buhay Foundation. So, sikat ito kasi, di ba, ito yung uh, associated with uh, Lenny Robredo. And then, we have uh, letter D, other non-profit organizations. So, magkakasama na sila. Magkakasama sila dyan kasi wala naman masyadong discussions for them. Ang mga discussions dito sa book natin, at saka dun sa related standards, ay dun sa tatlo sa hospitals, private hospitals, private college and universities, tsaka itong mga voluntary health and welfare organizations. So itong mga letter D, uh, yeah, ano na lang yan, mga for theory, for theory na lang, for theory purposes na lang yan. Examples are yan, museums, uh, religious organizations, dito um, professional bodies, sports, social or literary clubs, and other forms of charitable institutions. Okay? Ayan. So, second bullet here, surplus revenues of non-profit organizations do not inure to the benefit of a particular individual or group of individuals, but rather retained in the furtherance of organization's mission. And again, syempre, not for profit organizations. So, yung mga incorporators nitong mga corporations na to or organizations na to, no? hindi yung profit ang nasa isip nila when they created their organization. Talagang uh, yung vision, tsaka yung mission nila is uh, service. No? Service sa tao. So, it could be in a form of health, sa education, or yung welfare, etc. Yun yung kanilang uh, folk, yung end in mind. Ano? It's not uh, to earn money. But, since these are organizations na kahit pa sabihin natin hindi uh, profit yung kanilang intention, still, no, they would uh, do transactions that would require money. So, therefore, yung transactions talaga na i-deal natin dito sa non-profit organizations is mga ganun. Uh, yung fund is galing sa ano, mga donations. Yeah, mostly, do, most of uh, substantial portion donation. Of course, hindi naman yung 100% donation lang. Ano, for example, itong private uh, hospitals, tsaka private colleges and universities, bukod sa donations, they are also earning uh, in relation to their operations. So, sa hospital, edi yung mga uh, patients, sa uh, mga patients, yung revenue nila from their patients. Kasi hindi naman lahat yung libre. And then, for college and universities, for the tuitions, no. So, yung mga yon, those are revenues from operations, but maliit lang yun na portion of the total funds ng uh, organization. Okay? Accordingly, None of the surplus revenues are distributed as dividends. Of course, no. Uh, that's a uh, very uh, common sense. Na, no. There would be no dividends for these organizations kasi wala namang, kasi nga, ang dividends is this are for uh, profit-oriented entities. Ano? Dividends is, ang dividends is a return on investment. No. So, return on investment yan. So, as investor or as stakeholder, di ba? Kaya ang naglagay ng pera mo dun sa company na yun, you are expecting that after some time, that there would, you will receive a return on your investment. That is in the form of dividends. Okay, <clears throat> let me proceed. PFRS principles applicable to non-profit organizations. Ayan. Maybe you're confused, ano? or maybe you are, parang, parang balun ni sir, sabi walang accounting standards that applies to NPO, but may mga ganito. Well, um, ito yung sinasabi natin na kung pwedeng i-apply, i-apply. So let me read. Recognition, kung baga, ang, siguro to be precise, no? 
di ba sa ano natin sa sa mga book natin ng sipas or ng uh, financial accounting di ba makakakita ko doon ng from like for example uh, Philippine accounting standards number one di ba that applies to presentation of financial statements PFRS number three uh, inventories eh, parang ganon yung yun 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 Counting for non-profit organizations. So, yun yung sinasabi na walang ganong na-apply sa NPO. Okay? Pero, di ba, kung, kung marirecall nyo dun sa, ano, dun sa, sa conceptual framework, di ba, meron dong hierarchy. May her hierarchy of uh, the application of standards. Di ba, punahin mo yung mga accounting standards. Kung wala, um, any related accounting standards, kung wala naman pa rin, punta ka naman sa conceptual framework. Kung wala pa rin sa conceptual framework, ay eh, yung other reporting standards that would uh, relate nearly dun sa pinag-uusapan. So, dun po punta yan. Dito yung, dun, yan, dito siya magpo-fall, no? yung ganong logic. Yung pwede natin gamitin, gamitin natin para hindi siya masyadong mag-deviate dun sa account. Ano. Kasi, in the end, accounting para naman yung pinag-uusapan natin. So, we have to speak in the language of accounting. Okay. So, ayun. Uh, recognition criteria for assets and liabilities. Ayan. So, this is very common. This is very familiar to you. Yun pa rin naman. Um, Saan ba dito yan? Ayan. So, ito yung mga examples provided ano, na pwede natin magamit. Um, yun, yung mga assets or liabilities ng non-profit organizations. So, if those items meet the definition of assets or liabilities, eh, gamitin natin yung um, recognition criteria for assets and liabilities. Okay, letter B, ayan, so probable inflow or outflow of resources or economic benefits. And then letter C, uh, can be reliably measured yung item na yun. Ano? So, very common. Okay. Check lang. Nandito pa ba kayo? Yes. Nandito pa po, sir. Present pa po. Thank you. Okay. So, this is just a contin continuation. Ano? So, kanina, recognition criteria. This time naman, eh, the measurement naman. Ganun pa din. Um, in general, it's always the cost, cost, uh, cost basis yung ginagamit. Especially, di ba, kung cash. That is, kung ano yung face amount of the cash of the item. Pero pwede rin fair value, halimbawa, PPE. Or ano pa, investments. Or ano pa ba, yung mga ganun. Kung ano yung ginagamit natin sa accounting, sa accounting for private entity. <clears throat> so, kung then, pwedeng cost, pwedeng fair value. And then, letter B, ano naman yung, of course, no, sa financial accounting, if there's an initial measurement, meron din tayong subsequent measurement. So, when we say subsequent measurement, that is the measurement basis at the end of the reporting period. So, it could be amortized cost, cost model, uh, kung ano rin yung ginagamit natin. Kung baga, depende na sa item of, uh, Depende na sa unit of account. If that is cash, if that is receivable, if that is uh, PPE. So, depend, magde-defend. Okay? So, the recognition nandun din, of course. Mm. Okay na yan. Ayan. So, what are the uh, general features in the presentation of FS of non-profit organizations? Ayan. So, again, same with, with what I have said earlier. No? Uh, ito yung mga pwede rin gamitin sa NPO na ginagamit sa, uh, uh, sa ano, profit-oriented uh, entities, private entities. So, compliance sa PFRS, going concern, accrual basis, materiality and aggregation, offsetting, yung frequency of reporting, comparative information, tsaka consistency of presentation. Okay. May questions ba so far? Wala pa naman Wala. po. Wala naman po, sir. Okay. Thank you. 
Ayan, so we have here uh, fund theory and fund accounting. Ayan, sige, basahin ko na lang. So yung FS, yung yeah, FS of most non-profit organizations are based on the fund theory. So ano ba yung fund theory? Uh, it stresses great importance on the custody and administration of funds. So later, meron tayo mga examples, no? So dun yung makikita yun. Um, accordingly, the source, nature, and purpose of the funds held by the non-profit organizations are disclosed in order to give information necessary for the users to assess the stewardship of those funds. Ayan, sige. Later naman, uh, may examples tayo dyan. Ano? So, meron, ayun, ito pala. So, yun yung fund theory. How about fund accounting? So, sa so fund accounting, sinasabi, under this one, uh, the main accounting unit is the fund. Yeah. Again, this is an example then later. Ano? So, accordingly, transactions are accounted for in the books and presented in the FS strictly based on their fund classification. So, ito na yung sinasabi ko last time. Ano? So, yung fund classification natin sa non-profit organizations, we have three. The unrestricted, temporarily, temporarily restricted, at saka permanently restricted. So, yung bago, pinagsama na. No? Pinagsama na yung temporarily restricted, saka permanently restricted. Which would make sense naman. Kasi dahil walang naman talaga siya. Isang unrestricted, saka restricted. Under ng restricted, may temporary, tsaka mayroong permanent. Okay? Ayan. So, itong ano class, itong fun theory, ito yung nakasanaya natin, ano, na pag-treat ng uh, transactions. Kung ano man yung ginagawa natin sa the whole FS and each uh, accounts, no? Yun yung fun theory. So, itong fun accounting yan, may examples tayo yan later. Ano lang to, naka-column naka lang siya. Kumbaga, there are transactions, each transactions, they are always classified whether they are unrestricted, uh, temporarily restricted, tsaka permanently restricted. So, yun yung uh, salient feature ng fund accounting. Okay? So, there are uh, some differences here, ano? Bigay ko na lang sa inyo yan for theory purposes. Ayan. Ayan. So, punta na tayo sa, ano, sa mga relevant uh, terms and discussions when it comes to accounting for non-profit organizations. So, that would start on page 406 of your book. So, what, is con what are contributions or contribution? Ayan. So, di ba, sabi natin kanina, since uh, itong mga non-profit organizations in general is hindi nga sila uh, can create to earn profit, so yun, a substantial portion of their funds or of their equity ay manggagaling sa contributions. A example, to be specific, yung mga donation. Ano? So as defined here, pag sinabi natin contributions, ito yung mga resources that are received from non-reciprocal transactions. Ayan. So, quick review lang. Di ba, uh, dun sa, ano natin, sa mga unang chapters, di ba, diniscuss natin yung mga exchange transactions or reciprocal transactions. So, when we say exchange or reciprocal transactions, ito yung may kapalit lagi. Di ba, common examples, yung mga sales or payment of services. So, ganun. Kumbaga, when you give something, you are expected to receive something then. That is exchange or reciprocal transactions. So, dito sa contributions, nanggagaling yung fund from non-reciprocal or non-exchange transactions. Diba? Donation. Okay? At itong donation na to, ayan, they are classified as unrestricted, temporarily restricted, at saka permanently restricted. Okay? So, ano na yan, class? Itong term na to, yung, yung tatlong yan, starting now, ayan, lagi na natin babanggitin yan. Kumbaga, pag may donation, 
Ang unang gagawin, you have to identify kung alin siya sa tatlong yan. Alright? Yun lang. Yun lang yung basic niyan. And then, may binanggit dito. And internally restricted funds are unrestricted. Okay. So, ulitin natin. Internally restricted funds are unrestricted. Restricted siya in a sense, pero yung nag-restrict are the management or the board of trustees. So, since they are considered internal, uh, anong nga to? Internal users. Eh di, they are considered unrestricted. Kumbaga, kasi nga, ano to eh, yung funds came, is from donations siya. So, normally, donations came from a third party or an outsider. So, yung restriction is magde-defend dun sa outsider na yun. Okay? Alright, ano? So, I guess clear naman yung statement ko. Hindi ko na kailangang i-expound yun. Ano? So, ganun lang siya. If the, if the fund ang nag-restrict is the management or the board of trustees, yun, unrestricted pa, pa din yun. Okay? Right, let me proceed to the next discussion. Ayan. So, paano ba yung recognition and measurement of the contributions? Ganun pa din. Ano? Ganun pa din siya, class. Sa, ano, kung paano tayo mag-recognize at mag-measure ng assets, ng liabilities, ng revenues, ng expenses. Same lang. Okay? Ang kaibahan lang talaga dito, ayan, ang treatment nila sa fund is ganito. Restricted, <laughs> unrestricted, etc. Okay. Right? Ayan. So, we have definitions here. Ayan. So, wait lang. Ayan. Ayan. So, unrestricted support, tsaka restricted support, yun pa rin naman siya. Ano na lang to class, no? Uh, sa account titles na lang ito. So, makikita nyo siya later. Basta doon na lang kayo mag-focus sa ano, sa binanggit ko kanina na lahat ng funds, galing sa contribution, yun yung contribution na yun. Uh, magiging, ano na lang siya, magiging depende na sa statement. Babanggitin naman ng ano, ng problem. Okay? Okay, ayan. Unrestricted support, unrestricted net assets, etc. So, yung net assets, ha, di ba, from, from accounting naman, di ba, that is, ano, uh, assets less liabilities equals equity. So, net assets is yung, ano natin, equity. So, yun din yun. Yung equity is net assets ang tawag sa kanya. Dito, sa non-profit organizations. Okay? So, ganun lang din. O, oh, dito, unrestricted support increases unrestricted net assets. So, ano lang siya. Uh, directly, yan na lang siya. Proportion. Okay. Then with that, punta na tayo sa ang bilis naman na example. Masa na yan? Ah, okay. Ayan, class. So, walang, bag, uh, dito sa book, meron siya example. So, tingnan natin, ha. On page 407. Um, sige, ako na lang din ang ano, ako na lang din ang mag basa. So, I'm hoping no you are looking at your book, illustration 1 that is for unrestricted support. And then for illustration 2, we have example for restricted support. Ayan, so let's go over with this na. Iran ano lang natin to. I go over lang natin. So, as you see here no, a non-profit organization receives cash of 200,000 and land with fair value of 1 million to be used at the entity's discretion. Ayan. So, highlight na lang yung word na at the entity's discretion. So, yun yung uh, note ng donor. Bahala na yung entity kung saan na gagamitin. E di, on that note, unrestricted siya. So, therefore, yung entries natin, as you see, you have a debit for cash and land, kung ano man yung amount given, 
and then we have a credit for contributions revenue un unrestricted support ano so yung nakikita niyo dito yung cash and land that is of course an asset and then yung contributions revenue these are this is revenue account okay revenue account siya so eventually mapupunta siya sa ano sa unrestricted kasi ano to eh um this is diba this is an income statement account ayan so kung mga pagdating sa closing malilipat naman siya sa uh, net asset of the npo yeah. okay so hindi naman mahirap intindihin madali lang example punta tayo sa illustration number 2 ayan ano naman to restricted naman so entity a receives the following donations so cash 2 million to be used to acquire a truck the truck will be used in entity a's outreach programs so pakiya pakiya ano na lang paki underline na lang yung word na will be used in outreach programs ayan so on that statement no ano na yan um diba pwede mo uh, isipin mo na siya na ano siya temporarily temporarily restricted siya kasi doon lang pwedeng gamitin yung truck Ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin sa ibang operations of the NPO. Kaya, siya ay restricted temporarily. Okay. And then, we have uh, investment and equity securities with fair value of 500,000 to be held indefinitely. So, paki-highlight yung to be held indefinitely. That is, uh, ano word ko? Yung statement na yan, no, it would mean uh, rest, ano siya, permanently restricted yung uh, support na yun. Okay? And then there's another trans, ano here, events. Noong December 31, nag-acquire si NTT ng truck for 2.2 2, 2 million. Tapos nakareceive siya ng, sila ng cash dividends of 60,000. So yung 60,000 that came from the investment in equity securities yung 500,000. Ano? So naka-note naman dito class. Uh, only the investment income shall be used by entity A in its operations. So ibig sabihin yung 60,000 na yon magiging ano siya? Unrestrict, unrestricted siya. Okay? So since unrestricted siya, yung nakikita niyo account title direct na. Wala nang nakalagay na unrestricted. Ayan, dividend income. Okay. May tanong ba so far? Wala pa po, sir. Yes, uh, Ralph. Wala po, sir. Napindot ko lang po. <laughs> okay. Ayan, class ano. So, ganun lang siya. Um, kung mapapansin nyo, ano, uh, dun sa una naman, since basic lang yung transactions, we record the transactions upon receipt. And then dito sa second illustration number illustration number 2 uh merong transactions for the receipt and then there's also transaction for the purchase of the truck and also for the um for the receipt of the dividends from the investment. So, yun no? clear naman ano. Ang ano ko na lang dito no, ang side note ko na lang dito. You better take note kung ano yung ano, ano ba yung entry nung ano ba yung yeah, ano yung purpose ng recording mo so dito to record the receipt doon naman sa isa pangalawa to record the purchase ng truck tsaka yung to record din the receipt of dividends no? so basic ano lang yun basic uh, accounting drills lang yun especially i mean basic uh, recording drills lang yun so at least meron kayong ano meron kayong sinusunod na pattern di ba okay so, okay. So, yun yung ating uh, examples for uh, contributions. We go now to the next slide. Promises naman. Yung mga unconditional eh, promises or pledge. So, wait lang. Hindi ko ma-pledge, no? I just remember yung pledge ko sa inyo. Yung palang sinasolicit nyo sa akin is, your, is for your Christmas party. Okay, well, yes, mo, sir. Bang Christmas party ko, sana siya. 
Kaso po ay, hindi na po, ano po, nagkain na lang po kami, pinangkain na lang po namin. Kasi ay, nag-uwian na po kasi yung ibang mga klase namin. Kaya, ay, hindi na po makakapagsama-sama lahat. Kaya, pinangkain na lang po namin nung time na magkakasama pa kami lahat. Yan po. Sige. Okay, so, thank you, Miss uh, Helen Baldoviso. Okay. Um, okay, ano po, dinis na lang po ito. <laughs> yung uh, account lang po ni Mama ang damit po. Oo oh, nga eh. Ano po, ano po, ano po, ano po. Ano po, ano po, ano po, ano po, ano po, ano po. Sige, sige, speaking of pledge, no? pag nag, uh, pag nag face to face class tayo, mag ano lang ako. Doon lang tayo ng merienda sa ano natin, sa klase. Okay, so yun na lang yung pledge ko ha. Okay, uh, diretso tayo sa ano natin, discussion. So, promises, ano, or pledge. When you say promise or pledge, diba? Uh, yeah, nangako, na magbibigay. Pero it doesn't mean na may binigay na. Okay, so basahin natin sa slide natin. So, again, um, pagdating naman sa ano, sa pledge, or sa mga promises, sa promise na, uh, meron tayo ditong dalawa. Uh, conditional or unconditional. Pag sinabi natin, Unconditional, ano lang yan? Um, unconditional. So, walang condition. Walang may isip right now na uh, words to describe. Ano? Pero I hope, uh, alam, clear naman sa inyo yan. Ano? So, unconditional promise to give cash or other non-cash assets in a future period is recognized when they promise to give is received from the donor. Ayan, ano? Kasi nga, a pledge siya or promise Diba? Hindi mo siya matatanggap on the day or on the date na nag-promise siya. So, you will receive that eventually in the future. Kaya ang sabi dito, class, na kung babasayan niyo yung second statement, this is classified as temporarily restricted because of the time restriction, which would make sense kasi pledge nga siya. For example, um, I am pledging to give you 1,000. Say next week. So, unrestricted, ano siya? Restricted siya ng time. Na, kung baga, marireceive mo lang yung pinangakong 1,000 after a week pa. Kaya, on that note, uh, pag sinabi natin unconditional promise, ano pa rin siya? Uh, restricted pa rin siya, pero temporarily lang. Ano? Okay? Kasi ano siya eh, baka kasi initially, mai-associate mo siya dun sa unrestricted contribution. Kasi ito, unconditional naman. So, I don't know if you are thinking that right now. Pero ako, kasi ako initially, may ganong ano eh, thought. Okay? Okay, so pakitake pakita note na lang. Unconditional promise, temporarily restricted. How about conditional promise? So, conditional promise, ibig sabihin, uh, yung pledge is ibibigay lang Upon, ano, upon the happening of the condition. Okay? So, yung condition, depende yan. Nasaan na ba yan? Kasi yung condition, pwede yung condition siya ng time, or pwede yung condition siya ng happening of an event, etc. Dito ba yan? Wala. So, conditional promise is recognized only when the attached condition is substantially met. Ano? So, please take note, substantially meet. So, pag sinabi natin substantially meet, ano, it doesn't have to be 100%. So, wala nga lang siya ditong example ng, pers ng figures. Pero when you say substantial, ang sabi dito ay reasonably certain. Ang example dito, yun, if the conditional promise becomes unconditional, na meet na yon condition. Ay, nandito naman class sa page 409, ano? Okay, ang sabi pa dito, uh, pra, a conditional promise to give is considered unconditional if the possibility that the condition will not be met is remote. Kumbaga, kapag yung condition na attached to the promise is sobrang remote na niya para na mangyari. So, if that is equivalent to, ano na rin, uh, substantially met na rin yung condition. Ano? Clear naman, class, ano? This is just uh, words lang, pero hindi naman siya malalim. Mar marami lang 
words na ginagamit. Okay? Ayun. So, ang sabi dito, a transfer of assets. Ah, hindi. Wait lang. Ayun, correct. So, dito sa, ano, sa conditional promise class, meron pa dito ang ano, another discussion. Yung transfer of assets with a conditional promise to contribute them shall be accounted for as refundable advance until the conditions have been substantially met. Ayun, tama. Of course. No. So, liability muna siya. And so, para mas mag-sync in siya, punta tayo dun sa illustration. Uh, page 409. Ayan. So, an entity A receives formal promise from donor X to donate 1 million. So, this one is unconditional siya sa case 1. Kaya ang entry natin dito, ganito. Wait lang ha. Sabi dito, the donation is unconditional and to be received on February 14. So, we have two entries here. The entry upon receipt of the formal promise. Okay, basta nung, nung araw na nangako. And then, pangalawa is yung araw na mismong ano na. Uh, ano ta? Na-receive na yung promise. Ayan, so ganun lang din. So, uh, yung entry natin din sa una, donations receivable, and then credit contributions revenue temporarily restricted. And then, come February 14, ano na siya? Um, ito na yun, time restriction lang to. Kaya, on February 14, uh, yung receivable mo na debit upon the receipt of promise, kinedit mo na siya. And then you debit cash kasi nga, yun na yung uh, actual na receipt of the promise. Ano, ayan, okay. And then may note dito class, if the time value of money is material, receivable shall be measured at present value. Ano, so clear naman ito, di ba? Yung time value of money. So dito papasok yung... Uh, Interest equals uh, principal times rate times time. Yung may mga ano, present value factor. Yun, yun, yun. Dito papasok yun. Babanggitin naman. Babanggitin naman. Okay? Di ba yung time value of money? Yung concept ng time value. Na iba yung amount of an item or something today as compared to, let's say, last year or next year. And time value of money. Kumbaga, we are using present value. Binibring natin yung value of that item from the past. Ano yung value niya today? Yeah, vice versa. Okay, so sa case 2 naman class, as you see, ito naman yung condition. So, tinan niya yung example dito. The, the, the donation is conditioned on the submission of detailed formal plan for a proposed project. And then, ang sabi dito, nung January 1 pa lang, nung mismong araw ng promise, wala namang, hindi pa substantially complete yung plan. So, therefore, walang entry. Okay? And then, example natin dito sa case 3. Sa case 3 naman, ang kayabahan dito, um, on February 1, entity A receives the promise contribution before the attached con condition. Uh, on this one naman kasi, Na-receive nila yung promise bago pa yung ano, bago pa yung condition. Kaya, the debit cash and then the liability. Any question? Last na pa kayo? Wala naman po, sir. Yes po, wala naman pong question ngayon, sir. Ah, sige. Well, um, all throughout class, no? Ganito lang to kadali, I tell you. Madami lang siya. Pero ano lang, no? Uh, word of caution lang. Mm, hindi ako satisfied dito sa content ni Milan. So, as I said last time, uh, hanap pa tayo ng ano. Ang gawin natin dito para sulit, para solid yung ano natin. Magiging learning natin dito. Um, yeah, yung mga activity dito sa ano, kay Milan and from other books. No? Uh, ano tayo? Next meeting, ay uh, as if ano tayo, as if word the word siya. But since online tayo, we are doing it 
uh, online. Kumbaga, kayo naman yung mag-discuss ng mga i-assign ko na problems dito sa book. Okay? So, naano ko na to, na bilang ko na to, no? There are 25 here. Na divide ko na siya into 25 uh, people. So, let's assign it later. So, by next week, kayo yung mag-discuss nung uh, ano, nung in-assign kong problem and then i-discuss nung sa klase, sagutan natin. Okay? Okay. Okay, so we're done na with contributions and promises. We go now to services. So dito class, ang kwento lang naman dito is yung denominate is service. Kasi di ba, yung mga service na yan, uh, kung hindi yan, ang kwento dyan is, for example, there is there are skilled uh, professionals or skilled persons na if hindi nila donate, if hindi nila na-render for free yung uh, service na yun, magbabayad sana yung uh, NPO. So yung, on that uh, note, we consider yun as contribution. Kaya yan, isa yan sa mga ina-account natin dito sa uh, accounting for non-profit organizations. Okay? So ano lang to? Very ano lang to? Very straight lang to. Nare-recognize mo daw yung um, service na yun, no as contributions if that if those services na receive will create or enhance non-financial assets and then letter B yung service na yun would require specialized skills as provided by uh, personalities na makikita nyo dito sa page 410 Examples are accountants, architects, etc. Okay? Ayan. Ito, pakitake note class ito. Contributed services and promises to give services that do not meet the above criteria are not recognized. Ibig sabihin, only those given in this page nung i-consider natin as, ano, as, service to be recognized as contribution. Kung wala dyan, eh di, hindi mo sila consider as, ano, as contribution. Okay, so let's go to the example. Um, para makapahingaw ng konti, may I request, may I request, may I request somebody to read the illustration. Yes, uh, Zarina. Good evening po. Yun po bang NTTA, sir? Uh, so far, lahat sila NTTA. Yung <laughs> <laughs> 410, page, page 410. NTTA, a non-profit organization, received the following services. A. Carpenters repair the ceiling of NTTA's office for free. The fair value of the services is 20,000 pesos. Letter B, JPM members from various universities help in a tree planting activity initiated by Entity A for free. The fair value of the services might be 50 pesos. Pati po yung entries. Uh, okay na yun, uh, Sarina. Thank you. So, ayun class, ano, as stated kanina dito sa uh, nasa screen, and only those uh, in the uh, above given criteria uh, should be considered contributions. Otherwise, hindi mo sila recognize So on that on that uh, statement, yung ano lang, yung sa carpenters lang, yung kinonsider natin na contributions. So by recognizing that, uh, we debit repairs and maintenance expense, 20,000. And then, kinredit natin ay contributions revenue, unrestricted support. Yeah, ano. So, unrestricted siya kasi ano na to eh, uh, service ano na to eh, uh, umbaga, hindi ito in a form of cash service na to. So, in its very sense, wala nang restriction ito. Kaya unrestricted support yung nakikita natin dito na uh, term. And then, to sa JPM members, very obvious ano, no entry, no entry kasi wala naman sila doon. Tsaka, Ang ano dito, ang rational dito, 
Ito bang tree planting activity ng JPM members no? initiated by Entity A is ano ba siya, di ba? Parang would, uh, would it create or enhance non-financial assets? Not. So uh, dito na no, sa non-financial assets, there are no examples given. Pero the only uh, unit of account na naisip ko dito is yung goodwill. Wait lang. <laughs> and ano, so you may, uh, probably yun, yun yung tinatok. And then, non-financial assets, intangible asset pala yun. Wala siyang example eh. So maybe ang ano dito is, meron ba siyang na-create na item? Uh, na unit of account. Wala naman eh. So therefore, yung ano na yun, itong tree planting activity na to, eh di wala siya. Dead ma. Ayan. So yun yung example natin class for uh, services. And then, uh, there is discussion here for work of art and similar items. So to be specific, no, ano to? Uh, ano bang common example ng work of art? Yung mga ano, mga sculpture, ano yun? Yung mga paintings. Or yung mga, ano pa ba? Paintings na lang, di ba? Yung mga ganong, yung what if, ganon yung denonate daw. So, basahin natin. An entity need not recognize contributions of work of arts, historical treasures, and similar assets if the donated items are added to collections that meet all of the following conditions. Ayan, ano. So, okay, tagalogin lang natin ng konti, no? Kung yun yung mga i-donate, hindi mo siya i-recognize as, re as revenue. Pero may condition. Una, held for public exhibition, education, research, etc. Letter B, protected, keep un unencumbered, cared for, preserved, and then proceeds from sales, are to be used to acquire other items for collection. Ayan. So I think ang ano dito, no? ang pinag-uusapang ano dito, uh, specific non-profit organizations is yung mga museums, di ba? Yung mga for exhibit. So ibig sabihin, if they have received donations such as paintings, for example, painting ni, ano, ni Heart Evangelista, Aware ba kayo doon, class? Aware ba kayo na nagpipaint siya at ibang hilista? Yes po. Sa mga yes, bags po. Yes, yes po, sir. No, not... Yeah, yeah. Bags. Pero yung bags, ano yon? For ano niya yun eh. Parang signature bags niya. Pero meron siyang paintings na ano. Basta, grabe. Parang, parang overrated masyado. Ang mahal ng presyo. So, alam mo ba? Nag-donate siya at ibang hilista ng paintings niya sa museum. The purpose is for exhibit etc. Itong mga to. So, yung museum na yun, they would not consider those that uh, donation as contribution. Kasi the, the very purpose is for exhibit lang. And basic lang naman yun. Pero, meron dito class uh, pahabol na the reason for the non-recognition of an asset or revenue. Kasi nga, yung mga ganitong work of art is mahirap siya ngayon, no? mahirap siyang i-measure reliably. Di ba? Kasi, pabago, fluctuating kasi ang ano yung mga yan eh. Fluctuating kasi ang value ng mga work of art depende dun sa owner. For example, sa painter, di ba? Si Van Gogh. Nagmahal lang naman yung mga paintings ni Van Gogh nung namatay na siya eh. Nung buhay pa siya, hindi pa naman yung ganun kasi kat. Mga ganun, di ba? Ayan. So, yun yung ano lang na, no? no? In layman's word, Yun yung ano. Pero sa accounting, kasi nga, this work of arts may be difficult to measure reliably. At saka, ang sabi dito, yun, yung probable economic benefits. Diba? There would be no economic benefits dun sa mga ganyan. Kasi nga, the very purpose is to exhibit. Big sabihin, walang expectation of cash inflows upon receiving that donation. Okay. Pero, that's a statement na, in cases, however, where a work of art meets all of the recognition criteria for an asset, the work of art is recognized as asset and, re and revenue measured at fair value. So there's no specific uh, examples and further discussion. 
itong last statement dito, sinasabi lang niya na if yung mga conditions mentioned yung ABC is hindi na meet and on the other hand, probable na may economic benefits, ibig sabihin, pwede mo ibenta. Pwede mo ibenta yung denonate na painting para maging cash na lang siya. Yan. Eh, di na siya. Pwede mo na siya i-recognize as contribution. Yan. Measure mo not fair value. Okay. So, meron tayo dito illustration for fund accounting. Okay, class, no? Ito yung binabanggit ko kanina dito sa... Yan. Itong ano na to, sinasabi natin, no? Under fund accounting, the main accounting unit is the fund. Transactions are accounted for in the books and presented in FS strictly based on their fund classification. Okay, so we go now to the example. Okay, guys, uh, turn your book on page 411. And please do me a favor, pakibasa naman ako. Plus. Yes, uh, Jerry Mike. Magandang gabi po, sir. Good evening. Entity A receives the following donations. Letter A, an restricted donation of 1 million cash. Letter B, cash of 2 million restricted for the acquisition of the building. C, investment in stocks of 3 million. Entity A can only use the investment income. Entity A acquires a building for 2 million and receives dividends of 100,000 from the investment at the end of the period. Requirement for the transaction above under a fund accounting system. Ayan. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jerry. Mike. So, ito yung class, ano? Ito yung transactions. And then, ang ano dito is, how are you going to answer the requirement? Ang sabi, record the transactions under fund accounting system. And then, when you turn your page on the next page, this is the solution. So, naka, naka ano lang siya, ano? Naka matrix lang siya. So you have three columns here. Unrestricted fund, temporarily restricted fund, and permanently restricted fund. So ano lang? Fill in, fill in ka lang dyan. No mga entries, no mga transactions. So basahin lang natin. Yeah, okay. So letter A, unrestricted donation of 1 million cash. So as you see here, Nag-debit tayo ng cash 1 million, tapos credit contribution revenue. Yun yung uh, first column, first row. Yan yung letter A natin. Okay? For letter B, we have cash of 2 million restricted for the acquisition of a building. Ayan. So this is temporarily restricted. Ano? Kumbaga restricted siya just for the acquisition of the building. Kaya kung nakikita nyo dyan, meron kang uh, first row. Hindi, hindi pala. Sorry. Sek yung palang unang entry is uh, first column, second row. So yung letter B natin, solution natin is second column, second row. No, so you debited cash, 2 million, and then contribution revenue. Ayan, class. Ano? Napapansin nyo, no? Yung dinedebit nat yung kinecredit natin, class, is contribution revenue whether unrestricted or restricted kasi nandoon naman siya sa ila, sa column no unrestricted temporarily or permanently sana napapansin niyo na no very obvious naman ayan kasi di ba kung hindi fun accounting yan kung yan ay fun theory parang yung mga kanina itong mga unang examples natin this are fund theory. So, ito naman ginagawa natin. Fund accounting naman. Okay, letter C. Investment in stocks. Ayan. Investment in stocks of 3 million. Entity A can only use the investment income. Ayan. So, plus dito ha. Please take note itong letter C. Baka kasi makonfuse kayo. Wala siyang sinabi na perman permanently restricted yung investment income. Pero yung second statement would uh, impliedly say that kasi ang sabi, entity can only use the investment income. Uh, do you follow? 
Yes po. Yes po. Okay. Ayan. Ano yun? Ano? So, there's no express statement ano, that says that is permanently restricted. But the second statement would say impliedly. Ayan. So, as you see, ganun pa rin yung entry. And then, yung transaction natin, yung mudang letter, nag-acquire na ng building ng 2 million. Tapos nakareceive na ng dividends. Yun na yung sa 3 million. So, so, so nakikita nyo dito, asa na yan? So, before yung ano, before yung, ano, before yung actual purchase, actual entry mo for the purchase of the building, nagkaroon muna ng parang ano siya, parang reclassification. Diba? Ayan. Obvious naman, ano, nasa third ko, nasa third row. Sa unrestricted fund, dinabit mo yung cash, tapos kinredit mo yung net assets released from restriction. 2 million. Doon naman sa temporarily restricted, uh, ano lang siya, these are just uh, reverse entry lang. ba? Kasi nga, yung 2 million, initially, that is restricted for the acquisition of the building. Once pinurchase mo na yung building, ay di ano na siya. Kailangan mo nang i-reclassify yung item from unrestricted to, uh, I'm sorry, from temporarily restricted to unrestricted. Kaya may ganyan tayong entry. Okay? And then as it happens, kasunod na yon yung, kasunod na dun yung ano natin, yung transaction for uh, the purchase or the acquisition of the building worth 2 million, kaya may debit ka ng building and credit ka ng cash 2 million under ng unrestricted fund. Ayun. I hope that uh, makes sense. And then letter C, para lang yung katulad ng kanina, no? Uh, you debit cash, you, de you uh, credit dividend, dividend income. Okay. I hope that's clear. And then there are, ano, there are, ano dito? Ano to? Okay. Ano lang to? The balance. Ayan. So dito, class, uh, yung kasing kanina, ano siya, no? Uh, uh, yung matrix ng mga entry. So dito naman, itong computations dito is, uh, this is in support pa din dito sa una. Dito is, pinapakita lang dito what would be the ending balance of the net assets. Ayan. So as you see here, meron tayong net assets na temporary unrestricted fund, 3.1 million. Temporal, temporarily restricted, uh, zero. And then for permanently restricted fund, 3 million. Ayan. So, konting example lang to pero marami kayong ma, ma, ano dito, matatanda, ma, matututunan dito. And I believe, ano to, makakarating na to hanggang ano, hanggang deptals. Itong example na to, class. So, take note na lang, ano, fund accounting. Okay. So, we have here other funds held by Non-profit organizations. Ah, hindi siya diniscuss. Ah, saan FS na kagad. Hmm. Ah, sige, sige. Uh, daanan natin ng konti itong page 413 class, no? So, other than the examples given, di ba? Uh, saan tayo nagsimula? Sa donation or contribution followed by promise. And then followed by services. And then we'll discuss ng fund accounting. Tsaka yung mga work of art and other similar items. And then on page 413, andito naman tayo sa other hands held by non-profit organizations. Ibig sabihin, bukod, bukod dun sa mga na-discuss natin, ito rin yung other funds nila. Okay. So we have endowment fund, agency fund, plant fund, board designated fund. Di ko na masyadong babasahin at i-discuss. Halos pare-pareho lang naman. Punta na tayo dito sa example. Hmm. Sige. Illustration 1. Pwede pa kaibasa. Page 414. Yes, uh, Ralph. Good evening po, sir. Good evening. Illustration 1. Classification of Contributions. An NPO disclosed the following. 
A. Net resources of 1 million pesos invested in plant assets. B. Board dis designated funds of 600,000 pesos. C. Received 20,000 pesos cash from a donor who did not specify any use restrictions on the contribution. However, the donor specified that the donation should not be used until 2022. D. Received 800,000 pesos from a donor who stipulated that the contribution shall be invested indefinitely and that the earnings shall be used for scholarships. Investment income in 2021 amounted to 50,000 pesos. Okay. Um, thank you, Ralph. So, ayun, Glass, ano, um, kailangan natin pagdaanan itong mga illustration kasi ito yung mga, ganito yung mga examples sa Ganito yung mga activities sa uh, exercises nitong book natin. So, ayun, ano, uh, sagutan natin, though given naman yung solution, no, discuss lang natin. Ayan, so isayin natin. Ang, ang requirement lang naman dito is, uh, ayun, nagtatanong siya, nagtatanong yung problem, magkano yung unrestricted, temporary, tsaka permanently restricted. Ano? So, this is almost the same with the example natin dito sa accounting dito sa fund accounting you know, so this is just another ano, discussion okay so punta natin letter a net resources of 1 million invested in plant assets Ayan. so this is an example no na sobrang silent siya eh, di kung ganun ang assumption mo unrestricted siya kaya makikita mo siya sa column ng unrestricted net assets okay Letter B, board designated funds of 600,000. I have mentioned it earlier, no? Yung mga board is, ano sila? Uh, they, they are the management. So, para siyang management re restricted fund. Which, uh, I also mentioned that this kind of fund is considered unrestricted. Kaya nand, dito siya sa letter B. And then yung letter C natin, uh, saan na yun? And did not specify any, any use of restrictions on the contribution. However, the donor specified that the donation should not be used until 2020x2. 20, ayan, ayan, ayan. Plus, ano, so maganda dito kasi, na-expose kayo dun sa mga class ng transactions. So as you see here, binanggit naman na magagamit lang yung 20,000 until 20x2. So therefore, meron siyang implied na temporary restriction which is time restriction siya. Kaya siya nakalagay dun sa letter, I'm sorry, nakalagay siya sa temporary really restricted net assets. And then for letter D, uh, nasa na yan? Ayun, yun na naman. Yung word na shall be invested indefinitely. Kaya nandun siya sa, let, sa uh, column ng permanently restricted. And then again, as always, no, yung income or yung return on investment dun sa uh, yung, return of, yung return of investment maka yung earning dun sa investment yun lang yung pwedeng gamitin ng wait lang ba't siya nasa letter B? ah okay shall be used for scholarship kaya nakalagay siya sa temporarily restricted net assets Okay, so clear naman, Glass. Ano? So, same lang tanong kanina. So, ang ano ko na lang dito sa inyo is, himayin yung mabuti, yung mga word. Kasi, yun yung magiging, ano mo eh, guide mo kung paano mo siya ikaklassify. Alright. So, we go now to, ano, to illustration 2. And then, we also have net effects on net assets. Ayan. Sige. Sige, class. Ano? Um, itong mga to, bigay ko na lang sa inyo to. Hindi naman siya mahirap intindihin eh. Tapos with ano naman siya. With example naman. Okay. And then, proceed na tayo dito sa ano. Proceed na tayo dito sa next slide natin. Sa nasa screen. So, financial statements. So, ito, class. Ano? This is a comparison of... FS ng NPO. 
So first column is for PFRS based on IAC SEF published order FS chaka SPAS number 117. That's the same. So yeah, sige, discuss na din. So you would you would notice class ano? Uh, ito yung mga FS ng non-profit organization. Statement of financial position check. Statement of cash flows uh, check. Notes check. Pero pagdating dun sa pangalawa, statement of activities, ito yung peculiar. Ito yung peculiar to non-profit organizations. So tanong, ano, ano, kaya, ano ba yung dalawang uh, FS na nawala? If you're going to compare it to accounting for private entities. Anyone? Comprehensive income. Yes. Uh, sige. Uh, okay. Sige. To formally, ano lang, uh, recognize, no? Jan Carl. Sir, try lang po. Parang yung income statement po nawawala. Okay. That's one. Nabanggit naman ni Glazer May, ano? Uh, comprehensive income. Plus, ano lang, no, uh, for, ano lang, for, uh, ano ba, to, to officially say it, no, the name is, uh, yun, income statement or statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, no. So, yun yung ano natin, yun yung equivalent nung, ano, nung, kumbaga, yun kasing income statement, that's just the, ano, the, the, that's just the income from operation. Pero meron pa tayong tinatawag na other comprehensive income. Now, so the correct ano, statement there is pwedeng income statement or statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Pero may isa pa. Ano pa yung isang nakulang na nawala? Yes, Jerry, Mike? Tari lang, sir. Yung SCE po, sir, statement of changes and equity po. Okay, very good. Ano? So, yung statement of activities... Yan, siya yung nagre-represent ng statement of changes in equity and statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Ano, so, dalawa siya. Pinagsama na dito sa statement of changes in equity. I'm sorry, sa statement of acti activities. Okay, very good. Let's move forward. So, ganun pa rin, class. No? Paulit-ulit, as, as I said kanina, no? ang classification ng net assets is yung tatlo. Ayan. So, diretso na ako, class, sa ano ha, sa... Ayan, siya, ito. Ayan. If you could recall sa inyong intermediate accounting, di ba, uh, one of the discussions there in statement of profit or loss and under comprehensive income is yung ano, yung classification of expense, di ba, which is yung nature at saka function. Uh, are you familiar with that? Yes, sir. Ayan, ano? Which, di ba, we all know na ang very common na ginagamit natin is yung nature of expense. Ano? Eh, yung, yeah, the, the nature of expense. Yun yung may cost of sales, mayroong yung mga selling expenses, operating expenses, yun yung nature of expense. So, then, di ba, nadi-discuss din na there's this one na function of expense naman, which is seldom lang yung example. So on this one, ito, ito yung isang specific example dun sa function of expense. As you, as you see, di ba, tinaklasify yung expense as to program services at saka supporting activities. Um, sige, basahin natin ng konti. Yung program services, no, yun, ito yung pinakang ano, uh, core, core operations of the non-profit organizations. On the other hand, yung mga supporting activities, eh di ano lang siya. All activities other than the program services. So we have example here. Uh, management and general fundraising and membership development activities. So dito class sa program services, it would depend. Ano? Kasi sabi nga natin, sa, sa, ano, sa non-profit organizations, the ba? There are hospitals, private hospitals, there are uh, 
private colleges and universities, and then there are also welfare and ano yun? Ano nga isa? <laughs> yung mga welfare organizations and etc. So yung program services depende na no? depende sa specific na NPO. Okay, madalang malaman. Yan. Tingnan natin tong ano example. Ayan. So, we have here example ng page 421. Ayan. So, an NPO had the following expenses, administrative salaries, work to help, help elderly citizens, fundraising costs, child care services provided for indigent families. Ayan. So, on this example, hindi na banggit kung anong klaseng ano siya, kung anong specific na NPO siya. Kaya, ano na lang to. Uh, I-discuss natin ng mas madali by looking at the solution. Pero, pero very obvious naman, ano, na yung work to help elderly citizens at saka yung child care services, yun yung program services. On the other hand, yung, yung fundraising costs at saka administrative salaries, ayan, sila yung mga, ano, sila yung mga expenses na nai-incar kahit ano pa kahit uh, na na sila which is not considered uh, the core operation of the ano of the non-profit organizations clear naman na no class yes po okay thank you yun Okay, uh, another example here class, no? Dito sa statement of cash flows naman. Ayan. So, makakakita ka dito ng statement of cash flows of a non-profit organization. Ganun pa din. Ibibigay sa'yo yung mga transactions. Maka-identify mo naman. Sige. Uh, may I ask somebody to read yung statement of cash flows illustration? Anyone? Sige, Serena, ikaw na ulit. An NPO had the following cash flows during the year. A. 50,000 unrestricted contributions. B. 600,000 pesos from fundraising activities to support current operations. Letter C. 100,000 pesos from a donor who stipulated that the money be spent in accordance with the wishes of the NPO's governing board. Letter D, 200,000 pesos cash dividends restricted for the purchase of equipment. Letter E, 200,000 pesos on acquisition of equipment using the cash dividends above. And letter F, 300,000 pesos from a donor who stipulated that the contribution be invested in indefinitely. Income from the contribution may be used in furtherance of the NPO's mission. Okay, uh, thank you, Serena. Ayan, class, ano? So, these are the transactions given dito sa statement of cash flows illustration. And then, on the right, on the, on the other page is the solution. Ayan. So, ano lang, contain discussion lang. So, letter A, you know, um, of course, uh, we have to consider yung statement dito na an NPO had the following cash flows during the year. So, on that statement, no? That would mean we, we have to consider everything dito. Kasi these are all cash flows transactions. Depende na dun sa mga statements ng bawat isa. Ano? So, okay. So, on that note, basahin natin. Letter A, 50,000 unrestricted contributions. So, these are contributions. This, are, this is donation. So, this is cash inflow. Okay? Unrestricted. Kaya pasok siya sa operating activities. Ano, so as as you would notice ano uh, walang word that would relate to financing walang word that would relate to investing tapos unrestricted naman siya I, I'm, I'm sorry contribution naman siya so yung uh, considering those uh ano those concepts those uh those basta yung mga yan, those statements ba itong pay 50,000 ilalagay mo siya sa gagawin mo siyang cash inflow, kaya, kaya naka-positive siya. And then, ilalagay mo siya sa operating kasi 
silent lang siya. Okay, and then letter B, we have 600,000 from fundraising activities to support current operations. So, ganun din. So, these are uh, 600,000. These are funds from fundraising activities. So, diba, when you say fundraising activities, diba, ang ano nun, very concept nun is makalikom ng pera. So, ibig sabihin, cash inflow din siya. Kaya positive yung 600,000. And then, uh, walang statement that would say it is financing or investing. Kaya nasa operating siya. And then we go to letter C. 100,000 from a donor who stipulated that the money be spent in accordance with the wishes of the NPO's governing board. Ayan. So again, governing board, kaya unrestricted ito. And then, uh, donate from a donor, kaya cash inflow pa din siya. So ayun class, ano? yun yung ano natin dito. Yun yung mga, yun yung analysis natin dito. So, yung first three natin that would uh, compose the net cash flows from operating activities that would amount to 750,000. Okay. For letter D, 200,000 cash dividends restricted for the purchase of equipment. Ayan. So, obvious no obvious to purchase of equipment. So, it would be included in the uh, investing activities. Ayan. Okay. Ayan. Ngayon, class, at as you would notice, no, diba, naka ano siya, naka parenthesis. Ibig sabihin, cash outflow ito. Kasi ang sabi dito, asa na yun? For the purchase, cash dividends restricted. Ano, ah, saan na tayo? And then, and then, sorry. Yung letter D class is invest. Asa na yun? Letter D, 200,000 cash dividends restricted for the purchase of equipment. Ayan. So, nandun siya sa letter Yung letter D natin is nasa ano siya, financing activities. Bakit? Kasi as you would notice, cash dividend siya. ba ano to? Um, na to? For the purchase of equipment. ba ang cash dividends, that is a return of uh, investment. Okay? So ano yung ano nyan? Ano yung... Saan na yun? Ay, wait lang. Nalito na ako. Cash dividends. Kaya nandiyan ba kayo? Yes po. Tama yes, po, sir. Wait lang. Yes po, sir. Hindi. Uh, wait lang. Uh, being pwedeng paki, ano, paki off cam si Matthew. <laughs> Hindi ako makapopos. Sorry, class. Hindi. Nawala na ako sa focus. Yala, paki off si Matthew. Ayan. Ayan. Okay. O saan siya na? <laughs> Yung anak ko kasi. <laughs> Anyway, sige, let's proceed na. Ayaw talaga niya mag-off cam. So, dun sa letter E natin, uh, 200,000 acquisition. So, acquisition siya ng cash dividends, di ba? So, cash outflow ito. Kaya, negative siya. So, yung letter E natin, yung nasa investing. So, balikan ko yung letter D class. Cash dividends for the purchase of equipment. So, kasi pwede siyang pampalito eh. Purchase of equipment ang intention. But, these are cash dividends. Restricted for the purchase. Diba? Itong cash dividends class, ano to eh? This is a return of investment. So, diba? Ano yung, ano, ano yung prior transaction bago yung cash dividends? So, nagkaroon ng finance. Ibig sabihin, finance natin, diba? Kumbaga, galing siya from financing activities. Kaya, magpo-fall siya dito sa financing activities. Ayan. Ayan. I hope that would uh, that is clear na, no? Medyo na wala na ako. And then lastly, uh, letter F, 300,000 from a donor who stipulated that the contribution be invested indefinitely. Ayan. And then, income from the contribution may be used in in furtherance of the non-profit organization. Ayan. Okay, so... Itong mga to, no? Itong mga contribution. Nawala ako. Itong letter F natin, napunta siya sa uh, financing. Permanently restricted contribution. Ah, sige, okay na yan.
May tanong ba? Wala naman po, sir. Wala po, sir. Ah, sige, sige. Pero ako, no, I have to take this one. Meron ako mga thoughts in mind. Nakukulangan ako sa justification. Ah, sige. Okay. So, yun less, ano? So, yun yung ano natin. Yun yung example natin dito sa statement of cash flows. Then, paano yung solution niya pag ito yung problem. Okay. So, punta na tayo dito sa accounting procedures peculiar to specific types of non-profit organizations. Okay. So, ito class, yung mga ano, ano? Ito yung mga specific NPOs natin. Okay? Ayan. Sige, konti na lang to. Pwede na tayong, malapit na tayong mag-dismiss. Pero, ah, sige, sige. Okay, diretso ako ng class, ha? So, ano na, ito yung, it, itong next discussion natin, ano, ano na to? Uh, specific na to, depende na sa specific uh, non-profit organizations. Okay, diretso natin. And so, sa FS class, no, ito na. So, same with what I have said earlier. Kapag healthcare organizations, ito yung kanyang FS. Yan. Statement of operations in lieu of statement of activities. And then meron siyang statement of changes in net, net assets that is equivalent to statement of changes in equity if a private company da, na for profit in the notes. And so we have example here for healthcare organizations. Um, wait lang. Okay. So, ito class yung example, ano, mayroon tayo ditong proforma. So, dito, sa, makikita nyo rin yan sa page, ano, sa page. Ba't wala? Nakikita nyo ba sa book? Ah, hindi naman pala siya proforma statement. Okay. Ayan class, so we have here some formula no, to remember how to compute for net patient revenue. So, discuss natin ng konti. Ayan, so ito yung mga revenues if the NPO is healthcare organization. So, hospital. Okay, so for net patient revenue, ito yung formula natin. Uh, gross patient service revenue. Ayan, and then, we, ha we have to deduct uh, contractual adjustments, employer discounts, tsaka build charity care to get the net patient uh, revenue. And then you also have premium revenue result daw from capitation agreements and then, and then other revenues. Okay. So may mga examples naman dito. Tingnan natin. Page 425. Ayan. So, class, ito, no? Ito yung ano natin dito. Um, same na same lang to. Same na same lang nung nandito sa screen natin. Pero for familiarity, basahin lang natin. So, merong hospital. Uh, binil niya yung patients amounting to 600,000. And then, 500,000 doon ay, yun, as usual, no? Uh, general Chapel Health. Okay? So, it is estimated that only 530,000 will be collected. So, mayroong 70 na difference. Doon sa 70 daw, 35 ay yung contractual adjustment. Okay, check. 50 employee discount. Ah, uh, employee pala kasi. And then, uh, 20,000 yung charity care. And then, 10,000 uncollectable accounts. So, yun. So, ang binawas lang dito is yung tatlo. Of course, no? hindi naman kailangang ibawas yung uncollectable account. Ayun. So, straightforward lang siya, class. Okay, take note na lang nung ano, 
paki-take note na lang ng mga tourist dito para mas maintindihan niyo. To be specific is yung sinasabi dito na itong um, contractual adjustment at saka employee discounts, they are direct reduction to patient service revenue. Ano, direct reduction siya. Ibig sabihin, if you want to compute for the net patient revenue, kailangan mo siyang ibawas dun sa gross patient service revenue. Okay? O, oh, sige. It's clear. May corresponding entries. Bigay ko na sa inyo yan. Okay. Another discussion here. Hmm. Class na dyan ba kayo? Yes, yes po. Ayan. So, nabanggit din dito, class, itong capitation agreement. So, kung babasahin natin dito, itong capitation agreement, as mentioned here, is uh, these are agreements with third parties based on the number of employees instead of services rendered. Ano? So, ulitin lang natin. Uh, Revenue ito, ano, based on the number of employees instead of services rendered. So, to be specific sa example, mayroon kasi ditong agreement na magpo-provide ng medical service yung NPO to 100 employees. Kaso, yung actual 20 lang yung nakapag-avail. So, the question here is, magkano yung recognize Is it the actual or is it the, ano, the yung bilang ng employees. So following the concept of capitation agreement disregarded kung ilan yung actual na services rendered. It could be more, it could be less, but you have to refer dun sa bilang ng employees na napag-agrehan nila. Yun lang. So you just stick to the concept and then okay na kayo sa problem data. And then dito, for other revenues naman, class, hindi pa ba yun? Then, so dito lang sa page 127, ano? so other revenues, kumbaga, as I said kanina din, hindi naman, ano eh, hindi naman lahat ng fund or contributions would come from donation. Pero din talagang revenue from the operation. Dito sa ano na to, ha? sa mga gantong klaseng NPO. So for example, so dito sa ano, dito sa sa hospital. So dun sa hospital, in this example, meron siyang gift shop and cafeteria. And then, meron din dun sa donated shares sa kanila. I'm sorry, was this? Yeah. Parang investment, donated ano sa kanila, investment security. So, nagkaroon na ng return, of, return on investment. And then, sa letter C, that is a donation ng services. And then, donated supplies. So, as is lang to, no? basahin nyo na lang, lahat naman ay na-take into account. Ayan. Very yan lang siya. Very spoon feed. Okay. So, punta naman tayo sa page 428. This is about uh, restricted contribution. And, basahin lang natin. Um, ito daw restricted contribution. No? Uh, it should be, it should, uh, healthcare organizations present revenues from restricted contributions separately at the bottom part of the statement of operations after unrestricted revenues and expenses. So, yun lang naman yung statement. And then, there's example, there's, there is illustration here, no? Tinatanong, magkana yung total revenue in the revenue section of the statement of operations. Ayan. Okay, so again, clear lang, to, clear lang din to class, no? So, yung 400,000 dito, Ito yung tinutukoy na restricted contribution. So, ang tanong dito is, ang, ang deal na rin kasi dito is, papaano yung classification or yung presentation? 
Kumbaga hindi naman mahirap talaga yung problem eh. Kaya lang, pag hindi mo kasi alam yung concept, probably, isasama mo dito yung 400,000. So, yun lang naman yung gusto kong sabihin dito. So, based on this answer, hindi niya sinama si 400,000 kasi nga, it has to be separated from the unrestricted revenue. Unrestricted contributions. Okay? Class, nandiyan pa kayo? Yes, po. Present po, sir. Sige. Ayan, class. So, konti na lang to. Whereas I for readings na lang siya. So, dito na ako sa ano. Sa private, non-profit colleges and universities. So, basahin lang natin. Yeah. So, ang peculiar na ano dito, na accounting transactions dito is ito. Scholarships and fellowships granted freely are treated as direct reduction of revenues from tuitions and fees. So, same lang din to class. Parang ano to? Parang nasa na yun? Sige, hindi ko mahanap eh. So, paki-take note na lang, no? So, page 429. Ayan. So, itong, ano, class? Itong scholarships and fellowships. Ayan. Siya ay direct, redu direct reduction from, of revenues from tuition and fees. And then, yun namang letter B. Scholarships and fellowships granted. Ayan. Considered sila as expense. And then, itong withdrawal of enrollment. Ayan, direct reduction din siya from tuition and fees. Ayan. So, anong ano natin dito? Ano yung magiging issue natin dito? Kasi, if the question here is the net revenue, walang problema. Kumbaga, it's just uh, merely the correct uh, classification. The correct classification of the, of the revenue or of the expense. Ayan. So, ngayon, Kung pupunta tayo dito, class, sa, sa illustration, dito sa page 429. Ayan, tingnan natin. So, yung, yung university, no? So, they, they assess the students ng 1 million for tuitions and, tuitions and fees. And then, we have additional information here. Ayan. So, merong 50,000 scholarship para sa mga academic scholars. So that would uh, be an example of letter A. And then we have student scholarships granted to student assistants. And then refund for class cancellations and withdrawals of enrollment. So that is letter C. And then we have uncollectible, estimated uncollectible accounts. Ayan. So itong ano class, itong letter Yung 120,000, ito naman yung letter B. So ngayon, tinatanong tayo dito, how much is the net revenue from tuition and fees? Ayan. So based on the solution, ang i-consider mo lang dito is yung 50 tsaka yung 20 kasi sila yung direct reduction from the revenue of tuitions and fees. Unlike nung, ano, nung 120,000, this, this is considered expense. No. Pero eventually naman class, so as you see here class, no, sa page 430, the answer is 930,000. Eventually, this 930,000, ibabagos mo naman dyan itong 120,000 para makapunta ka na dun sa bottom line. Dun sa ating statement of, ano, statement of, anong name dito? I believe this is, ano din, statement of operations din. Ayan. Nagigets nyo? Nakaka-follow kayo? Ayan, wala na. So, yun lang kalas, ano? So, dito sa private non-profit colleges and universities, this is the same with ayun, with ano, with dito sa healthcare organizations. Kumbaga, ang issue dito is yung dapat alam nyo kung yun bang item is direct reduction dun sa 
dun sa, rev sa gross revenue para makuha mo yung net revenue or yung item is expense. Kasi kung expense siya, hindi mo siya pwedeng ibawas doon kung ang hinahanap is yung net revenue from that specific revenue. Ayan, something like that. Yun yung ano lang. Baka kasi hindi niya siya mapansin kasi nga sobrang plain lang. Sobrang plain lang nung problem tsaka nung discussion na kung hindi mo nabasa yung concept, lahat ng item ibabawas mo. Ayan. I hope that, ano, I hope that makes sense. Okay. So, on that note, class, no? The rest are just uh, for readings na lang. So, yun. Yun yung ating, ano, yun yung discussion natin for this topic, non-profit organizations. So, pwede kayong mag-on-come para makapag, ano ulit tayo, picture. May tanong ba? Nawala na. Ayun. Carmela Tan, pwede ka nang mag-on-cam. Okay, sige, class. Uh, kindly ano na, para makano na tayo. Okay. Kaya lang sa camera. Smart. Ayan class no. So bago natin tapusin to, i-assign ko muna yung ano. I-assign natin yung mga mag, mag magsasagot. Okay, ready na ba ang lahat? So sim simulan natin sa problem 16-3. So problem 16-3. Ah uh, mayroon ditong uh, problem and then Bing pa kay mute muna. Di pa tapos mag-class eh. Ayun. So we have here problem no but there are seven items to answer. So for this one I would be asking for two two from the class no to answer this. The first one is yung 1 to 4 tapos the second one is yung 5 to 7. Pwede mag-volunteer, pwede ako tumawag. Kaya wala nag, wala walang nagbo-volunteer, magbibase ako sa ano. So, kay Kirjan ko na lang. Kirjan Abetria. Kirjan, paki-confirm. Sige po, sir. Sa'yo yung ano, uh, problem 16-3, item number 1 to 4. And then, meron pong gusto mag-volunteer sa 5 to 7? Okay, wala. So, I would give this to Miss uh, Agudo, Chris Angela. So, ganito lang yung class, no? Uh, you, you read, next meeting, you read the problem and then you, you discuss the answer. For the benefit of the class. For your benefit then. And then I would account na lang ito sa ano, participation. So I would go now to classification contributions, page 442. Ayan. So kay John Carl na ba ito? Sige. 8 to 10. Anong surname mo, John Carl? Garbida po, sir. Garbida. Okay. I will go now to non-cash assets. Only one item. Bigay ko na ito kay Trisha. Lois Bidia. And then, for services, isang item lang din. Sige, kay ano na lang. Yung naunang tumaas, kay Miss Napoles. Paki ano na lang ha, lower ng hand. And then, for contributions revenue, only one item din. Sige, sa'yo na, Miss Kapanas. And then, net assets released from restrictions. Two items ito. Oh, sige na nga. Madali lang ito, Ralph, pero sige, tumaas ka eh. 
Okay, we have net effects on net assets, number 16 and 17. Pati na rin yung receipt ng resources on agent. Now, items number 16, 17, 18. Kanina to. Walang nataas. Based dito sa aking display, kay Mr. Babaw ko siya ibibigay. Mr. Babaw. Jan Ford. Okay. Um, na, item number 19 and 20. Intermediary between donor and donny. Anyone? Okay. Ah, sige. Kay Jerry Mike. Move it. And then, punta na tayo sa problem 16-4. So there are five items for problem 16-4. Para lang to sa isang tao. Kinang gusto ng challenge dito. Okay, walang nataas. Based dito sa aking listahan, Miss Barceliano, wala ka pa, no? Serena? Serena? Sige. Pakisabi na lang kay Sarina. Noted po. Okay. Uh, for endowment, only one item. This is for Trisha, meron ka na, no? Miss Bidia? Yes po, sir. Yes. Ah, sige. This, sino nag raise ng hand? Ah, sige. Si Tan. Tan Princess. Okay. So, Princess, ano lang to? Only one item lang to. Endowments. Plus, ano to ha? Uh, you, you have to discuss the answer with solution. You have to prepare as a, a, a visual aid. So that uh, we can see your solution. Okay. Um, functional classification of expenses to items. Sino gusto? Uh, Glazer May, wala ka pa ba? Oh, sige, sayo na to. And then, net patient service revenue. Sino yung tumakas kanina? Sige, Miss Garcia. Isa lang naman ng Garcia sa inyo, ano? Opo, sir. Sige. So, this is item number 9 only. Sige. Okay, capitation agreement. Ako, basic lang to. Wala pong mataas dyan? Gaya mo lang nataas. Trisha, meron ka na. Diba? Sino yung tumaas kanina? Ayan, kay ano, Likas. Anong name ni, Miss, ni Likas? Miss ba o Mr? Ay, basta Likas. Miss po. Lori Beb, nice name. Okay, other revenues. Uh, isang item lang to, number 11 lang. Sinong gusto? Miss Sario. Oh, dalawa ang Sario. Sino nga yung isa? Sario Nika. Anong name yung isang Sario? Christine po. Oh, tanda ko kayo. Yung record na ako ng grade niya eh. Basta yung isang saryo, palagi mas mataas sa isang saryo. <laughs> yung naalala ko. And then, another net patient revenue, number 12. Sige, doon na to sa isang saryo. Saryo Christine, sa iyo yung ano ha, item number 12. Nasaan si Miss Christine Saryo? Noted po, Nico. sir. Okay. And then, net revenue from tuition fees. Punti na lang, class, to. Para makauwi na ako. Net revenues from tuition fees, wala ba? Yung mga hindi pa nabibigyan, baki ano na, kasi lahat kayo mabibigyan. Sige. Helen Baldoviso. 
Hey, Denise. Okay, accounting for marketable securities. Isa lang din to. Miss Oringo. And then depreciation, Miss Opleda. Statement of cash flows, oh madali lang to. 16, 17, 18, si Miss San Antonio. And then we go now to problem 16-5. Ayan. So itong, nang, itong ano na to, recognition and measurement. So wala, hindi siya multiple choices. You have to prepare the journal entries. Ayan. Yung mga pahuli. Ayan. May hirap na yung mga tanong. Sino yung mga wala? Okay. Si Miss Paril po, sir. Asa si Miss Paril? Nandito po pero po mahina po yung net. Ah, sige. Paril. Care of Ralph. <laughs> Ay na ano. Ah, Ralph, banggit na lang kay Miss Paril ha. Problem ano? Problem ano? Problem 16-5. Yung item 1 and 2. Noted po sir. Okay. Punta naman tayo sa... Unconditional and conditional promise, uh, journal entries lang din to. Sino pa? Wala ka pa ba, Miss Kansana? Wala pa po. Ah, sige. Sa'yo na to. Unconditional and conditional promises. Okay, uh, ano, oh, fund accounting. Madali lang to. Fund accounting. Sino pang wala? Si Miss Marco. And then, Miss Marco, ano, sa'yo yung number 4, A and B yung requirements. And then, next, other forms of contributions, number 5 and number 6. Ay! Kahit lang, class. Ay, hindi pala. Miss Marco, sa'yo ay ano? Sa'yo ay yung... Miss Marco, sa'yo na rin pala to. Sa'yo na pala tong other forms of contributions tsaka yung FS. Kasi multiple choices lang to eh. Theories lang. Miss Marco, pa confirm Yes po. Sir, ano nga po other form of... Ano po? Wala ba siya sa platform? Andito po, Andito, sir. Integration ng hand eh. Plus, pakasabi ha, pakasabi kay Miss Marco. Kanya rin yung, kanya yung 4, 5, and 6. Okay, yung 7 and 8, sa'yo na rin yan, Miss Marco. Choices lang to eh. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Dami na. Okay. Okay, uh, punta tayo sa net patient service revenue. Ah, hindi pala. Sige, class, sorry. I'm very, ano, I'm very spontaneous. Miss Marco, ang sayo lang ay yung number four. Kasi transaction ito. And then yung number five hanggang nine, yun ang sa susunod kong tatawagin. Class, sinong wala pa? Okay. Sino nag raise ng hand? Miss Hopelio. Ayan. Miss Hopelio, sa'yo yung ano ha, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then, uh, performance indicator at saka Itong 10 at saka 11, there's, this is only for one person. Sino pa? Nasa po na ako. Plus, meron pang ilang din natatawag. Hmm. Nawala na eh. Kasi wala na sa platform. 
Miss Sario, meron na ba? Ay, ay, sorry. Ayan, meron na rin. Wala na, wala na sa platform. So, sino ang... Ay, sige, ganito na lang. Ito-check ko na lang dun sa class list. Kung kanyang ako tayo bibigay. Pero, goods na tayo. Okay, class, may tanong pa kayo? Or may 